In this session, you will discover how a non-techie creator can build a ChatGPT app in 20 minutes with no code, which is really, really incredible with this new technology, what you can do. And I think we're gonna show something with MidJourney as well. And my guest today, Jordan Richardson, he helps non-technical entrepreneurs build profitable tech with no code and AI. And I found his YouTube channel. Uh, he has a few videos on there, but some are really impactful. And I thought it would be cool to bring him on here for this session to teach you guys more about how you can do this. Because I think you might not realize the opportunity that uh, is with no code and AI and how this can kind of combine with each other really well. And of course, in this session, we can't build something crazy complex because, you know, we have, <laughs> you know, some time, but uh, we will build something for you to kind of see the opportunity here and it will be quite useful. So with that being said, warm welcome, Jordan. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me on. Uh, so yeah. would you like me to just dive in now or? Yeah, I just wanted to ask you first, like, you're, how, how did you get into no code and AI? Do you have experience from before or you just an enthusiast and you got into this somehow? What, what was your journey into this? Yeah, so, so my journey, my career path is pretty crazy, frankly. I, I left college uh, not quite sure what to do. I joined the Teach for America program. That was awesome. I was a sixth grade math teacher for a couple of years and, you know, making 34 K a year, it wasn't that great of pay. And I wanted to make some side cash. So I, I decided, well, maybe nights and weekends I could learn to build apps or something, you know, and, but I, I don't know how to code and I don't want to learn how to code. I, I just don't think I can code. I don't know if I'm that smart, you know? Um, and so I, I discovered no code, which is this growing movement of tools that allow you to program software visually without actually having to write the code. It just kind of writes it in the background for you and you're able to build software and apps. And obviously the end user doesn't care what you use to build the product, right? All they care about is the results they get. And so I uh, kind of dabbled with that a little bit. And then long story short, I was, I was at a different company and my boss had this idea and he uh, approached me and uh, he he knew I had dabbled in building apps. He didn't know I was not a coder, but he he approached me with his idea, and I said, "Yeah, I think I could build that." You know, and I I decided to fake it till I could make it, right? And so I built this software with Bubble.io, and it, it got valued at seven figures, accepted into a tech accelerator program. We went and pitched all the investors in San Francisco, we, and we did all that stuff. And we seven years later today, we, we still are built on Bubble. And it's amazing. Absolutely love uh, what you can do with no code. And, and now with AI, it even enhances your ability even further um, with the ability to you know generate, I guess, if you wanted to generate code with AI and inject that into your apps as well. But the, the for a creator, for a non-technical entrepreneur creator, it's never been a better time to, to start a software business. So uh, yeah. it's been a lot of fun. And then after I left Revitize, my last startup, I started my own little academy. And now I help teach people, coach people on how to build their own software with AI and no code. So that's kind of a short. Yeah. No, yeah. That, that's awesome. And yeah, for maybe you can give some examples. So no, no code software, like what, what type, what, what are some really popular ones that creators use right now in, the, in this day and age? Great question. So there's bubble in my opinion, that's kind of like the, the king of the no code tools. It, it, it's the best and most robust and, and maybe a little bit of a higher learning curve, steeper learning curve than some of the others, but you can do the most with it um, in terms of building web apps. There's Flutterflow, which is great for building native mobile apps. There's AppGyver, there's Glide, there's Adalo, there's Thunkable. There's, there's a bunch of tools. Zapier is probably the most famous no-code tool, which is like the API for APIs, right? So basically allowing you to connect your app or one app to other apps and, and have if yeah. then, you know, logic and all that stuff. But yeah, there's yeah. a bunch of them. Yeah, and uh, like there's also like a movement with no code websites and stuff with like Framer and uh, you know Webflow, right. and then we have Notion as well. We have so many now popping up, and I think I mean no code tools. I think I mean I, I do think it's the future. And now with AI, it's just kind of you know adding gasoline on this basically. It's just kind of kind of gonna grow a lot faster, and there's so much you can do. And a lot of these tools are adding AI as well into it. So. 
But uh, for this session, let's let's dive into it to actually show showcase. You know, probably if you're watching this, you are not that techy. <laughs> well, if you are, maybe you're <laughs> you're already building some apps. But most most of you are probably non techy, and so we're gonna show you how you can build a ChatGPT app in 20 minutes or around this time. Uh, you know, in a demo here, and I think we do something with Mid Journey as well. Or you can you can walk them through what we are gonna do, with Jordan. Yeah, so yeah, let's do it. I'm going to share my screen really fast. And uh, obviously, this is a live presentation. So uh, let's try and make it happen. Um, so I'm going to just open up my bubble.io account. If you don't have an account, it's easy, it's free. You can sign up for an account. You'll see something like this once you get in. And I'm just going to create a brand new app from scratch. So I could just say demo app. 55 or something and get started and let's just start with the basic features uh, again this is all you can do what we're about to do on the bubble free plan uh, i'm going to skip the application assistant now as as navid mentioned um we're not going to build anything crazy complex because because i mean it takes a little longer than 20 minutes to build something complex but you can you can build your idea i mean almost certainly you can build your idea with bubble with no code um so if you have an idea feel free to reach out to me jordan at nocodeadvantage.com happy to help but um let me just show you kind of how i would go about building something an integration with ChatGPT and or MidJourney. Obviously, MidJourney doesn't yet have its own proprietary API, but there are a lot of API devs that have built on top of MidJourney. So uh, effectively, you have a MidJourney API. So I'm going to first go to the plugins store, okay? And I'm going to hit add plugins, and I'm going to go to ChatGPT. I'm going to type in ChatGPT, and then actually this is a plugin I built, <laughs> the connection I built. I'm going to install this one, ChatGPT by No Code Advantage. Uh, that's me. I'm going to install that. And um, all we need for this is your ChatGPT API key. And the way to get that is you just go to platform.openai.com. You, you'll definitely need to have an account with, with OpenAI. And my account is is here you'll want to set up your billing now fyi open ai does charge a little bit per api call uh, if you want to know the pricing it's just uh let's see here open do you need like the plus plan for this or this is different you need like this is the developer platform right yeah this is different than the plus plan yeah this is yeah. just for the api so right. if you wanted to use gpt4 which is the most smart intelligent uh model ai model then uh this is this is the pricing and if you're wondering what tokens are well let me show you open ai tokenizer um so if i typed in hello there or something like that that cost me three tokens okay so that's kind of how they charge is is with tokens and it's three pennies per 1,000 tokens. So it's fairly inexpensive. And then the output is basically the response that you get back from ChatGPT, and it's six pennies per 1,000 tokens. Um, and if you wanted to use GPT 3.5, which is very capable, maybe not quite as intelligent as 4, but it's still great, uh, this is the pricing for that. So there's that. Um, and to grab your API key, you'll just want to go up to the top right-hand corner, view API keys. You want to create your own key. Uh, I have just a, a test key that I'm using for this demo here. Um, and uh, my key is this, this big, long string of characters. And I'm going to come back into my app. And the way uh, this API, the way chat GPT, excuse me, the way OpenAI accepts this is you want to say bearer and then a space, and then paste your key. And that's it. Bearer space, and then your key. And I'll do that for the test version as well. Same thing. Just copy and paste that in there. And now we're ready to roll. We have a connection with OpenAI. That's all you need to do. And now, um, if I wanted to you know, type a prompt or something on my app. Now this is the, this is the canvas of my app page, right? If I wanted it to be more like suited for mobile or something, maybe I would go down, bring that width down to like 320 pixels wide. So it's kind of like a phone, you know, maybe by 600 or so. Again, all this stuff is, these are nuances of building the app depending on, you know, how you want it or how you like it. Um, I'll just keep, I guess I'll just keep this a little bit wider for now. So 1020, oops, 1020. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and grab an input element. 
I'm going to grab that and throw it on the page. Now I have an input with which the user can type, uh, in which the user can type. And uh, if, if I hit preview here, I have an application with an input. But if I hit enter, nothing's happening. Why? Well, because I need to build it, right? So let me grab a group element. And I'm going to just throw that group on here. And, and just FYI, Bubble, excuse me, I'm going to bring this layout up a little bit, maybe like 800. Uh, Bubble uses groups to show and hide, to show and display data. Um, and what is data? Well, data is information. Uh, it could be an image. It could be a video. It could be a could be a, just a line of text. It could be whatever, right? And in this case, it is indeed text. Uh, so we want to display. So we're going to say that this group, the type of data we're going to display in it is text. Uh, cause it check text is chat GPT's response, right? So we get going to go ahead and put that there. And then the data source for now will leave empty because we don't have chat GPT's response yet. So we'll leave it empty. But as soon as they type in this input, we want to display that data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this input and come down here and say, I'm going to start the workflow for when someone changes the value of this input. So if they type, what do I want to have happen? Well, I want to ask a question to ChatGPT. And remember, we installed that plugin. And so this action is now available to us. Uh, so if I say question, there it is. If I type question, there, there's our action. And um, I have these little template uh, things you can use if you wanted. Uh, so if maybe for the initial training, we could say something like, and just FYI, ChatGPT requires quotes uh, for whatever reason to be around what you're saying. So we put quotes there. So let's say for the initial training, we want to say, you are a sarcastic chat bot named Wilbur <laughs> or something weird like that. Um, and then GPT confirms. Uh, so GPT sends back. I understand, you know, we, we just want to basically simulate that we've already kind of instructed ChatGPT what to say and that it understands what it will say. And if you're not sure what ChatGPT might say, you can literally just go to chat.openai.com and say exactly that. You can just say you are, you are a sarcastic chatbot named Wilbur and see what it says back. <laughs> and, uh, nice. Okay. So this is what it said back. Oh, how the tables have turned. So it's being very sarcastic. I'm going to copy that. And I'm literally just going to come back here and throw that in there. And you don't have to throw that in there. You can make it say whatever you want to make it say. The model, you can choose, again, GPT-4. Like I showed you before, it's a little more expensive but more intelligent. And uh, GPT, if you wanted to do the little cheaper version, you could say 35 dash turbo uh that's the model for the little cheap a little bit cheaper version but still very intelligent uh now the question itself let's delete this little template i have here and let's insert dynamic data because we don't want to always say static text we want to we want it to to be dynamic based on whatever the user types in the input box right so let's insert dynamic data here and we'll say whatever they put in this input that we want that value and then uh, a, a trick in Bubble, in order to get those quotes around it, uh, you, you can just say mark that as JSON safe, um, which basically allows it to put quotes, as well as like if I were to put in that input something that confuses the API, like a bracket or like a like a, a, something that, that the API um, doesn't want inside of a prompt, this will format it the way the API likes, basically. So that's how we format the question. And we are done. We're done asking the question. But now we got to wait for the answer and display it here, remember? So just so we can see this a little bit better, I'm going to make this like, I don't know, like pink, sure. <laughs> and then um, we want to display it in this group. And this group's name is group text. So I want to remember that. And I want to say display the answer, display data in that group. Which group? Group text. And what data do I display? Well, whatever ChatGPT returns to me after having processed my question, right? And how, how, does, how do we know that? Well, we just grab the result of step one. So whatever we just asked. And then uh, this one is just, uh, I can show you why the why later, but for now, I'll just tell you the what. You'll want to go to choices, first item, message, 
content. That will give you the answer back from ChatGPT. So now we're asking and we're displaying the answer. However, because a group isn't necessarily text, we're displaying the text data in this source, but we also need to display it visually. So we are displaying it technically. It will be there in the group, but we also want to display it visually here. So I'm going to add a text box inside of that group, and I'm just going to simply say uh, insert dynamic data and just do whatever the parent group's text is, is what we want to inherit on this text. Okay, let's hit preview, and we should, hopefully, unless I forgot something, we should have uh, a sarcastic chatbot answering our question for us. Uh, and it's that, it's that simple. So I'm, I'm just going to get out of debug mode. There's this bottom little bar here that helps in the development process, but right now we're trying to run it as a user. So I'm just going to get out of that, and I'm just going to type in something like, um, what is the distance from the Earth Earth to the moon. Enter. And it's processing. It's running that step one. And hey, we have ourselves an answer. Oh, the distance from the earth to the moon. Well, it's a quite staggering journey of blah, 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 blah. So it's giving me the answer in a sarcastic way. Why in a sarcastic way? Remember, because we gave it that pre-prompt, that initial training, right? So you can kind of customize this for your app and your use case. So that's a very simple integration with uh, with ChatGPT. Um, now, if you want, Navid, we can take this further. We can iterate on it. Yeah. We can change it. Or if you want, we could. I could show a very simple version of Mid Journey. Whatever you prefer. Yeah, I mean, this is this is cool. Like, but I think let, let's uh, let like, like what we talked about in the pre-chat. Maybe we can work to integrate like ChatGPT with Mid Journey with the kind of doing like a little little tool like this to just create maybe images for social media that can be for, you know, launches, you know, Black Friday sale, whatever you want to do, right? And yeah. kind of how this, this could be done with, you know, no code and the AI, like as you have done here, but maybe in a more, you know, practical way that people would use it for images and stuff like that, but usually it takes a lot of time. Awesome. Yep. Let's try that. Let's try it. So let's say, um, uh, let's say that we're prepping for a Black Friday sale, and and as as such, we want a really uh, exciting background or an exciting image to kind of be, be the background of our sale announcement or something, right? So maybe we could say something like, I don't know, like um, I am prepping for a Black Friday sale. I want to use Mid Journey to generate an exciting background abstract image that will display the excitement <laughs> of my uh, uh, of my sale uh, please give me a me a prompt that I can then use in mid journey to generate such an image or something. Again, I'm kind of thinking off off yeah. the cuff here, but let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Ah, oh, the famed Black Friday sale where wallets tremble and bargain hunters unite. <laughs> They're definitely he's definitely not uh, he's definitely keeping up with the sarcasm. Okay, so imagine a frenzy of shoppers dashing through. We'll see what we come up with. This is our prompt that mid that uh, it gave us. Maybe we need to give them specific that it's for a for an online course or something like that, right? Yeah, and that's a good call. That's a good we need call. to be more specific. Otherwise, they think we are going to shop for a TV or something like that. I think. <laughs> right, right. I like that. I like that. Let's see. Yeah, um, my, my, maybe uh, for. <sighs> I mean, let's pick a niche and kind of like be spe as specific as possible. So, yep. so the image image turns out better, I think. Kind yeah, of. good call. Good call. Okay. So I'm going to say to ChatGPT, I am prepping for a Black Friday sale. I want to use MidJourney to generate an exciting background abstract image for my online course that will display the excitement of my sale. Uh, let's see. Um this I, I don't know. Does Mid Journey do? I'm trying to think if Mid Journey would even put like 50 percent off or something like that. It's this, very. It's pretty bad with text. Pretty bad with text. Experience. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't do text uh, on Mid Journey. Okay. I would put that afterwards. Uh, okay. Cool. I cool. would do the image and then I would do probably the text in Canva or something like that. Yeah, right? that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 
Cool. Okay, so I want to use MidJourney to generate an exciting background abstract image for my online course that will display the excitement of my sale. Um, my brand is um, dark, so so please make the image dark. Uh, the image uh, background dark and abstract. Uh, please give me maybe three prompts, three different prompt ideas. Um, that I can then use in mid journey to generate such an image. Let's see what they come up with there. Yeah, can you give also like the difference? Like now we are using, so we are using, could you put this directly in chat GPT or do you, do you prefer to like do it with, I, I think you're using this kind of tool that you, that you showcase first to build this little sarcastic, you know? <laughs> right. You know, how, yeah. What, yeah, what so... is the best way to do this? To, like, do you automate this to get better prompts or what, what is the way? Because you could also just go directly to ChatGPT. So what is the purpose to build like with no code and integrate AI into this? Can you explain a little bit so people would understand why you would do maybe something like this? Yeah, yeah, great question. Why and why would I not just go to ChatGPT mm -hmm. and do this? And for this use case, honestly, yeah, you probably could just go right to ChatGPT. However, in in there are many many ideas where you could have your own white labeled AI powered app, right, for you and your clients to use. And maybe it's like, for example, here's just an idea off the mm -hmm. cuff. You could train Bubble to every single day. Uh, generate a new social media post for you by hitting ChatGPT with with you know maybe uh -huh. the image prompt and then hit mid journey to grab the image and then hit and then hit you know the Facebook API or, or the Twitter API to make the actual post and therefore uh, now well, you're automated basically yeah automated. every single day okay. well, without you lifting a finger your bubble app is okay. automatically posting uh you know interesting business insights for you right or, or just an, another idea for an app would be because my my uh, one friend and also is uh you know i did i'm doing a session with him as, as well like about how you create how you use ai to create a webinar like and he's basically integrating with google slides and stuff like that to to pull from mid journey and he's also done this he's built a little tool for his uh, audience with like prompts and stuff like that that they can just pull in and they and he's using basically the api from you know open ai chat gpt so right uh, that that yeah. is a pretty that is a pretty cool use case if you have like a course or something like that you could let's say you uh, like for a webinar you need slides right so like how and but you also need maybe great imagery so he's basically integrating with AI with Midjourney so I don't know how, that that is yeah. a pretty, that is a pretty simple tool though it's not that difficult I don't think so true yeah and and I think yeah you're right that the the real value here is in your creativity and your ability to to create useful things beyond just prompt yeah. and response right yeah you want to I think it's like think what your customers do, would would struggle with that would take a lot of time and do it and and think how can AI solve this or make this faster and then right. either try to figure out a way to create it yourself maybe you don't have much of a budget but most i mean if you're already selling stuff you can also like hire someone who's good with this and you you would do it now we are showing pretty simple stuff that just to kind of display that this is possible so it's not like right. you're gonna build the next <laughs> unicorn or something like that in like uh, 20 minutes but you can do a lot of cool stuff with no code and ai in a short time but if you take longer time you can build some really fantastic stuff right yeah and and this is just fyi this is something i built for my own purposes this is a little chat bot that that is i built fully with with no code with bubble and i've trained the chat bot on my frequently asked questions you know and and anytime nice. someone comes to my website you know they go to no code advantage did you build this interface as well this is nice looks good yes thank you i did build all this in bubble yet with no code and this here if you go to no code advantage.com and ask a question that's totally built with no code with bubble integrated with chat gpt and trained on my information right that's so, a great example what you can do with this uh, but that's yeah. a little bit longer time i think because it's right a, right <laughs> definitely not has a UI yeah. has a nice interface it's not just like this you know so it takes right. a little bit so you, you need to know a 
a little bit. I mean, I, th this is just kind of the display how you can like get started with this. Maybe you are yeah. really interested and you will dabble with this because you didn't know anything about this when you got started. And then now you, 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 are, you don't have like a coding background or something like that, but now you're building like applications and stuff like that with no code and AI, which is really, really cool. Exactly. Yeah, it's pretty, I, I'm a, I'm a former college football player and been hit in the head too many times. And if a meathead like me can do it, I know you can do it too. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So, <laughs> All right. Let's, cool. let's yeah. Continue. So, so we got that. So, so maybe we, we have our idea for, for a prompt. Again, this is kind of like we said, this is more of an example app. Um, but, uh, to kind of showcase the power and then the idea, you know, comes that comes later. But, um, so let's just say this is our like chat GPT side of things. And what if we want to build a mid journey integration? Well, there is a service that does that. Um, uh, as we mentioned, mid journey itself doesn't yet have its own API, but there's this service called imagine API dot dev, which does, uh, have an API and it integrates with your mid journey account for you, which is kind of cool. And I have signed up to their hobby plan just to kind of test it out. And so I have this and, and, um, don't worry, uh, by the end of this, I will switch out my API key so nobody can steal my account. <laughs> but, um, okay. but, uh, let me hurry and go to the plugin store again. And again, the plugin store is just like a candy shop. I love checking it all, all the possibilities out. There are many developers who have built added functionality on top of bubble. Uh, so, and one of which is mid journey. And this is my plugin here, uh, mid journey via imagine API dot dev by no code advantage. I'm going to install that one. And all you need to do is have two pieces of information, both of which will be supplied to you by imagineapi.dev as soon as you sign up. So um, you just need uh, the, the token, again, your, your API token to authenticate you. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to say put that there in the authorization. And again, most API services, for whatever reason, they want bearer, space, and then the token, right? So that's how you do that. And then um, as for the other one, I'll throw that one in there as well. And then to actually, uh, your your API base URL will be different than mine. And so um, I'm going to grab my base URL and throw that in there. And here, and here, and here. And now we are ready to go. We have an integration totally ready to roll between our own white labeled app and mid journey. So now you can say, Hey, I have an AI powered image generation app, right? And we talked about different use cases, but you get the idea. So I'm going to grab another input element. I'm going to drop it onto the page here and I'm going to throw it right here. And we will say, um, next, I want to grab another group. Uh, and this group can go here. And I'm going to make, again, this is very ugly design, but this isn't the design tutorial. So hopefully you're okay with that. We got that. And now this group, um, again, remember the pink group was text because it was the answer from ChatGPT. This group is going to be, uh, the data type is going to be image. Um, and the data source is empty for now because we don't yet have the image that we want, but we will leave it there as an image. Now, um, just like similar to what we did with this, we inserted a text element to actually display the text visually. We want to grab an image element to actually display the image visually. So we'll throw that in there and let's center that. Sure. And the dynamic image will just be, we'll insert that and say, whatever we send to that parent green group, uh, will be the image. So the parent group's image, and that's all we need to do there. And now, um, let's uh, right click and start the workflow for when they change that input. If someone types in a prompt to mid journey, what do we want to do? Well, again, because we have this plugin, we have two actions here, one to send the prompt off to mid journey. So that's the one we want first send prompt. So I'm going to grab that action and I'm going to not always want a happy clown. I want uh, whatever they put here, right? So in whatever they put in input B's value. So let's highlight this and insert dynamic data and say whatever they put in input B's value is what I want to put. And then um, next uh, is uh, we want to actually 
So th- this is this is to prompt it. And Mid Journey obviously takes a little bit of time to to create the image because it's custom for you based on the prompt. This isn't stock photography for anyone who's not familiar with Mid Journey. This is custom art specifically based on your prompt. It's not just pulling, you know, it's not just doing a search of stock photos. Okay. So we got that. And now, um, the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to display that. But in this case, because this does take, you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds to actually generate the art for you, which is crazy. 30 seconds to, <laughs> to custom generate an art, a piece of art is amazing, but it does take, you know, 30 or, or so seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to build another event here and we're going to just say, this is a custom event. And just for fun, I'm just going to make it blue, I guess. And I'm going to say, um, uh, grab, image, something like that, or get image, maybe get is a better word, get image. And in order to get the image, we're going to need to run that other one called get image, right? That action step called get image. So I'm going to say get image and it needs, in order to get the right image, we need an image ID. Well, where do we get that? Well, um, we need that. So because we need that in this blue workflow, I'm going to add a new parameter and say, image ID. And that will just be simple text. Oops, simple text. And we need that in order to get the the appropriate image for the prompt we were just prompting. And so what we're going to do, uh, and that's, we we get that from the result of this step. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to schedule a custom event for, let's say, um, let's say five seconds into the future. So I'll say five seconds in the future. It might not be ready within five seconds, and I'll show you how we handle that in just a minute. But let's say for five seconds in the future, hoping it's ready within five seconds, uh, we want that. But for the image ID, well, it relates to the prompt we just barely made. So let's grab this and say the result of step one, ID. We want the ID for the prompt we just made. Okay, so now we're triggering this get image workflow, and it's pulling this ID. And so what we want to do is not have a static ID. We want to put whatever, whatever we've just passed through this, this gate, right? So we're basically handing it off from this gray workflow five seconds later over to this blue workflow. We're passing this image ID through the gate and we're passing it here. And now we have tasked mid journey with getting that image, but it might may or may not be ready, but if it is ready, we want to display that data just similar to what we did in the other one. We display that data in group image, that green group. And we will say, we want the result of step one. We want its image URL is the way bubble likes it. The URL to that image, but it might not be ready. So how do I, if we send this workflow off, if it fires within five seconds and it's not ready and it doesn't have an image for us quite yet, well, what do we want to do? Let's just try again in five more seconds. So let's just have it, let's just make it ping uh, mid journey every five seconds until we finally have it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, copy this, right click, paste this. So now I have the whole thing. So I'm going to call this one number two and I'm going to call this one. Number one, I guess. So get image one, uh, we ping mid journey, we try to display it if it exists, but if it does not yet exist, then we're going to, again, schedule that custom event number two. Um, and we're going to say, wait five more seconds. And so we're delaying five more seconds and the image ID will just be basically that same image ID. Cause we don't, we want to keep that same exact image that we just prompted about. Right. So we just grab, uh, whatever we pass through this gate, right. We, we put here. So the same image ID and we only want to do this if it's not ready. Cause if it is ready, we don't want to keep asking for the same thing that's already ready. Right. So let's say only when the result of step ones, um, and, and it, what, what this API does is it will upscale the images. Uh, so you have a really high quality version of each of the four images. If you've ever used mid journey, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, but we'll say if e- any of the four upscaled URLs, if the first item is empty, AKA it's not fully finished, well, then we do want to keep pinging uh, every five seconds. We want to go to the next one, right? Just a question now, on this, uh, Jordan. Uh, it, yeah. is, 
you usually in mid journey they are pretty low low resolution right typically right right so is that's what that's why you're you want to up do you normally upscale manually or <laughs> this is like this is going to be automatic to upscale it is that what you're yeah, doing yeah that's a great question and and yes for this particular service imagine api.dev they automatically upscale all four images and, and what is the resolution from the beginning maybe that's is that good enough for social media for mid journey directly or would you still upscale it uh is that something you have noticed? Yeah, I've noticed that, that both are, are honestly pretty good. But I probably, if I'm going to take an image, I'll probably get the upscaled version, and then I could do whatever I want with it later. I can downscale it later if I want, you know. But and how big? How big is that usually? Like, what's the resolution? Uh, that's you know? a great question. I don't know. We can find that out in just a minute. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's like a full, you know, I don't know if it would be print worthy or something. I'm not sure, but that would, yeah, that would that's a good question. Maybe, maybe we can probably check after we do the image. So, yep, yeah. yep, let's do it. Let's check. Okay, so so there's that, and then it'll ping the second one. And if it's, if it's not ready, right? If it's if the first item is empty, aka it's not ready, then we're gonna ping this guy, and then this guy is going to try to reprocess and say, Hey, mid journey, are you ready yet? Uh, no, you're not. Oh, okay. So then if not, then we want to do the same thing we just did. So I'm going to copy that, come back here and paste. And it's literally just going to go back and forth between one and two, one and two, one and two, every five seconds until it's ready. So we'll say if the result of step one's, uh, upscaled URLs, first item is empty, then we will ping number one. So now it should um, give us, uh, that should only, we don't want to get caught in a, this infinite loop where bubble is just constantly running these blue workflows without, without a need. Right. So that's why I put these only when conditions and said, only run it if we need to right <laughs> on both of these. So cool. Okay. So we've got that. We're displaying the data in here. I think we're about ready to roll. Let's, let's give this a shot. Let's refresh the page and I'm just going <laughs> to grab this prompt for ChatGPT and say, please give me a good background image for my Black Friday sale. Um, we've got that. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Oh, and I forgot to the text well, right now. What was it's, the course we are? What was the course we are doing? Like what niche? So maybe that that would play a role as well, right? In the description, maybe for that's a good point maybe for busy should we do something specific or you, you're doing something for you like with dark you said you wanted to have it dark right so maybe that's uh, yeah but 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 no i'm open to anything i, I no, think that good... doesn't, doesn't matter let's just do you can do an example for your brand as well if you wanted to or or we take like busy moms or something like that yeah. weight loss for busy moms in their 40s or something like that yeah let's cool. try that i like that i'm okay. prepping an uh, uh for black friday sale i want to use mid-journey to generate an exciting background abstract image for my online course that will display the excitement of my sale. Um, this will be for busy moms in their 40s. This will be for uh, maybe the, the target persona. The target persona will be busy moms in their 40s. Um, sure, let's try that. Uh, the course is related to uh, making money online or I don't uh, just thinking off the cuff here. Cool. Let's grab that now and let's try that prompt and we'll see what we get. Cool. Okay. So we've got picture a whirlwind of cash tornadoes. <laughs> nice. We'll see what happens here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and now ask mid journey to do its thing. And again, this is this may take a little bit of time, so we'll see. Hopefully, it it comes up with something. Um, so every five seconds, and maybe what I should have done is put this in debug mode, so you could kind of see what was happening behind the scenes. But basically, right now, it's running every five seconds. It's doing a check to see the progress of that mid journey uh, photo, and so it looks like right now. Thus far, it keeps returning uh, empty. Sorry, we're empty. Uh, or or it, we don't quite yet have an image for you, but hopefully soon it will. So um, let's see. What, what's the second prompt? Imagine a vibrant college of 
a collage of vibrant dollar signs, shopping carts, and multitasking moms gracefully juggling laptops, smartphones, and stacks of money. Let's not forget the flying sparks of online success adding to the electrifying. I, I think we should add like, or that is for weight loss. I think that that would not that would be for something different. I think we should add like if it's for something specific, like a course about weight loss or something like that. Then probably yeah. wouldn't do that. <laughs> it be, let's see what it comes up. But this will be very cool anyway. Let's see what it comes yeah. up. With. Yeah, I'm. I'm just curious. I mean, this is so. This is pulling directly from me. You don't even need to go into the app, right? Right, right. Yeah, and and maybe maybe I don't know. Some clients don't want to have pay for Mid Journey. They just want to pay you for <laughs> your social media optimization app or something. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, it is generating uh, each of those images, and we've got I ourselves. I mean, this is kind of this is this is hilarious. But let, let's, <laughs> let's 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 change this a little bit to try something different. Let's try yeah. like bu like busy moms in their like you let's say you are a weight loss coach for busy moms moms in their 40s i'm selling a course on how to help them lose weight after you know i don't mean pregnancy all this kind of stuff maybe they they help 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 with this and that that would be probably a different you need to show maybe something you know maybe maybe something there some exercise i don't know something like that yeah yeah um a diet yeah, we... or like a healthy living something about this like uh, you know more and more yeah. <laughs> yeah my course is my course takes uh the fundamentals of exercise diet um let's see here exercise diet nutrition and packages them in a uh in a mom friendly uh, way or something um yeah please. you're just making this up but like yeah it's a course basically you can do this for anything you can like just your imagination you're probably know your target audience better like if you right. do something for this will be easier and you can also yeah i have also uploaded images to mid journey like that i have used and it can be like a you know screenshot or something like that of, of you like maybe you did a video like this you could actually upload a screenshot and get like a really cool image from mid journey which is uh you know, hundred percent right. unique, uh, and it's is you on there with maybe you had an interview or maybe that's a client of yours or something. You can do it pretty cool, right? And there are even APIs that generate video for you. So maybe maybe you have a bunch of Mid Journey background images and you kind of throw them into a video carousel or something. Again, the the sky's the limit. It's the, your imagination's the limit. And you know, you could if you if you get stuck, you can there's there's promptbase.com and you can look and say I want Mid Journey prompts for or my specific use case. And maybe, maybe you pull s some of these that are most accurate, you know, $3 for a bunch of prompts, uh, yeah. that are most accurate for your particular use case. And then you hard code them into your bubble app. And now everybody is just blown away by the quality of art that your app creates. I don't know, something, like, uh, something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah. yeah, we just, did, we just did this on the fly, but obviously you can have a much better, like prompt specific to what you want to do. And there's tons of them on prompt base. There's some other places, but prompt base is pretty good if you just want something specific. And I'm sure you can, can, and also you can play around a little bit with, you know, you know, imagine certain, certain things, and then you, you will be able to create a nice, nice looking image basically. But yeah, it, it takes right. some time to, to play around with the prompts. Right, right. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully at least this gives your viewers an idea of the power that they have uh, to be able to truly build their own custom white labeled uh, apps. You know, with, uh, we didn't write a single line of code and we were able to, to whip up a, a true ChatGPT slash mid journey app, you know, in a few minutes. And, and uh, obviously this, these are simple, you know, quick examples, uh, with with kind of poor prompting but let's but, share uh, yeah well, the prompting could have been better but <laughs> let, yeah. was, we did it on the fly building it but but yeah. let's uh, let's see for for the upscaling how does that work yeah great question so in order to upscale um what we'll do is we, we need to come back here and we're sending the prompt we're getting the image and then once we have the image uh, what we could do is we can not only display data in the, 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 like, what do you call this? The four, 
the four images, those are not upscaled. Those are just kind of the four samples. But what we could do is we could build the four upscale. So we'll just say copy paste. And I'm going to bring this Oh, Sorry, I'm going to make this taller now, maybe like 2000 pixels tall. And now I'm going to bring this down and just say um, upscaled version one. So group upscaled one. And then I'm going to uh, maybe, maybe just to differentiate, we can make this like a, a light blue or something, copy paste. And then this, uh, this one can be the upscaled version number two. So we'll say upscaled two, and then we'll copy paste. And again, this design is terrible, but, uh, you get the idea upscaled three and copy paste and upscaled number four. And then what we'll do is we will display each of those in here. And then what we'll do, let's say if they click on it, so let's right click and start the workflow for if they click on one of these upscaled images, what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and open, oops, let's open an external website, which is where the image is actually hosted. So we'll just say, um, uh, this images, uh, we'll say this images, sorry, I need, what I need to do is I need to say that this is going to be of type, um, text. And instead of sending the image, we'll just send the images URL. So we'll just say the parent groups text and that'll still work. But if I click on this, I want to go to, um, the, uh, Let's say if I click on the, anywhere on this outside blue group, I want to go, I want to open an external website and I want to go to, um, this group's text and that will be the URL and we'll open it up in a new tab. Um, and, uh, I guess we can get rid of this because we're doing it this way. So now we're going to up, go to that URL. We're going to do the same thing here really fast. We're going to change this to type text so we can actually click on the URL and we're going to right click, start the workflow. We're going to open up the external website and say, this group's text is where we're headed. And same thing for number three, right click, start the workflow, open an external website. Uh, I forgot to change it to type text. This is now type text, come back. We'll say this group's text. Cool. Open a new tab. And same thing for this. Let's make this of type text and add the workflow. If they click on it, we will open an external website and we'll go to this group's text in a new tab. All right, we've got that. Now we just, we need to build the workflow for actually displaying it in these blue groups. So let's come back to our original workflow here. We're prompting mid journey. We're pinging it after five seconds. It may or may not be ready. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say copy and paste and say, we want to display it in upscaled one. Do we want to display the, the base URL for the four? No, we want to display the upscaled URL first item. Um, and let's, let's just copy this and then paste this here and say, now we want to, in, in the group upscaled number two, we want to show item number two. And then copy this and paste this. And for up, group upscaled three, we want to show item number three. And paste. And for upscaled four, we want to show item number four. Okay. So... Um, and then we would probably want to do that same thing in, in this one. So a little bit tedious, but that's all right. Let's copy and paste. Cool. And it gets confused because it doesn't know which step we're talking about. So let's go back. Result of step one. Cool. We'll do the same thing here. Copy and paste. Nice. Step one. And let's just do the same thing here. Copy, paste. And we'll go to number three is item number three and paste group four is item number four. And now we should have it ready to roll unless I forgot something, but we'll see what happens. Okay. So now we will say 
You are a weight loss coach for busy moms in their 40s. I'm selling a course to help them lose weight. My course takes the fundamentals of exercise, diet, nutrition, and packages them in a mom-friendly way. Please generate, I don't know, you're probably better at prompting than me, Navid. I don't know. <laughs> Think yeah, here. I mean, I mean, what are we going to, so for Black Friday or like maybe maybe an image to promote the course or something like that. I'm not, yeah. I'm not this is not my market, but <laughs> I'm just yeah, trying to yeah. the fight is something, something <laughs> different. But either way, you, you, if you're watching this, you get the idea what you can do. It, we are basically displaying how you can build this. But yeah, you just put in something that we, we can try to get an image of I don't know for Black Friday or something, but because we don't know the we don't have the name for the course and stuff like that, and we don't want to have text. When you do with Mid Journey, I don't recommend having text on the image. It doesn't really come out that well. So that right. you can add afterwards. But it's more like having an eye-catching image for something like that. Maybe yeah, maybe that can be some kind of exercise or de depends kind of your market for this, right? Like you you can maybe showcase when you're training someone. I mean, there, there can be different things you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we'll give this a shot. Let's see what. Let's see what, see it what comes it up. Comes up and I guess it's probably not helpful that I told it to be sarcastic too. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That, that is probably not the most helpful for. I mean, that that's just a fun example. You know what I mean? So, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And and again, this is this is my fault. I forgot. You have actually I'm, built two apps in this. Like you built first the <laughs> the little little chat bot, which is really right. a fantastic one, and that took like no time at all. That was really quick. Right. And then you <laughs> built uh, the mid journey. You know. So yeah, it's pretty cool what you can do with it. We we just wanted to show you the possibilities here. This does not mean that this is like the best way to do a prompt to create uh, we have another video on this actually and then we took more time on uh so basically check this out it's like a full mid journey tutorial we also have a guide on mid journey so like uh, coming up with prompts on the fly is a little bit harder especially when it's something we we just uh, it's a different market basically than than we are right used. right yep yep you're right well we'll see what we'll see what we get here again it, it it's it's pinging every five seconds and we'll see what we come up with. So this green section should show kind of the four samples that mid journey generated for us. And then when they're fully ready, it will automatically then it should automatically then generate um, each of the four images upscaled. And then when I click on those blue groups, it should take me to the actual URL and which that makes me cool. let's check how this is that that is yeah while that's doing that I want to make sure I set it up right <laughs> let me make sure I didn't forget something so let's say mid journey prompt we got that cool uh five seconds later we hit this yes now we're hitting yeah okay yeah that should work let's see um okay so we're getting that so it's not upscaled yet because it's still kind of doing the drawing of it. <laughs> um, we've got ourselves at least something that it's every five seconds iterating on a little bit. And then hopefully it will show us what we want. Um, these are interesting. <laughs> Busy mom there, I guess, right? Um, okay, cool. So now we have the upscaled images. And now if I click on this, it takes me directly to that upscaled image. <laughs> this is uh, funny. I probably <laughs> wouldn't use this for a promotion, but like, yeah, you, <laughs> right. you, yeah. Can, you can, you can do something better. If you have, if you also, if you have some reference images from your brand, you can probably do a lot better. True. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, we, we probably would have had something more specific for what, like maybe, uh, maybe showing an exercise or something like that or like working yeah. out together like you know help basically if you're helping someone you probably want to showcase this on the image or or something similar at, at least that, that's what i would do i think they didn't get the the, the point across exactly but <laughs> yeah. it's, it's quite a cool image i mean it's it's yeah yeah it's cool it's just definitely not a good black friday sale yeah it's, so, it's not a good one for this but so, yeah that's my fault i probably should have come more prepared navid but thank you for letting me at least showcase the power of no code. So yeah, that yeah. that is the point for this session, not uh, not uh, the prompting part, but like the right. to show that you can build an app in pre, you know pretty quickly. We built like two very simple ones in this session here, 
I yeah. mean, it's still, it's still cool. You can and and what is the size <laughs> of the images you got? That, that's what I was. Uh, it looks like they're they're ten twenty four by ten twenty four. So not too is that bad. The yeah, pretty... version is that the upscaled? Yeah, right, right. These are the upscaled. You could probably version. upscale them more, like because yeah. that's, even from mid journey. Sometimes you got. I think my my. A friend, he said you got a little bigger, and when I've okay. done it, you can you can get some bigger images, and also you can you can make them landscape with some parameters and stuff like that. Oh, cool! Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So with some with some tweaking and some iteration, you can build some cool stuff with with no code slash AI. That that's for With sure. Some more examples, like maybe the, this is a really quick examples. I mean, you, we 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 just talked like what can we showcase in a short amount of time to for you to kind of get an idea of what is possible. But of course, you can build something maybe more useful for your business. Uh, you know, the sky is really the limit with this. Uh, what right. is something uh, you showed your tool with a chatbot you built? Of course, yep. there are. There are also subscription services that do stuff like that. You can like pay for, but you built your own, which is really cool. <laughs> and uh, what, what else have you seen that people have built? Maybe you have built, can you showcase some examples uh, like that are maybe a little bit more advanced than what we showed, what, what we could show in this time we had here today? Yeah, yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. Uh, the one that comes to mind right now, Voice Pen, I think it's called. So I have some friends that are, that are, great bubble developers, um, that built, uh, that built voice pen dot AI. It's integrated with some AI tools. It's totally built on bubble. I can prove it here. If I inspect, uh, we got bubble elements all over the place here. <laughs> if I right click and inspect, uh, wow. but yeah, it was built with no code with bubble.io and they're making a lot of good money every single month through subscriptions. And they've even built and sold some apps on some no code, apps on uh, acquire.com. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but they yeah. used to be called micro acquire, but now they're, they're acquire.com. And, um, you know, you can, you can take content, turn it and, and use AI to turn it into a blog post or, you know, like a YouTube video or a, a thing of, you know, a, a snippet of audio or, you know, maybe a, a meeting or something you could have, you could have something, uh, you could have your, your app integrate with maybe Google meet or zoom or something. And then teams who are having meetings, uh, could then, um, the transcription of those meetings could then be sent to AI who would then be the note taker or the, the action item producer or something and would take those notes and those action items and email them to you in a very simple, you know, maybe email them to all attendees of that meeting, uh, so that, uh, you don't need to have a human scribe or something like that. Or, you know, there's lots of different, uh, there's, there's a ton of different use cases. I I've built a very simple app where called travel roulette, where, okay. uh, you know, you type in, uh, your, your, a few pieces of information about yourself, maybe like, uh, you know, like, uh, what your budget is and what your family, your travel party looks like, whether it's, you know, you and you and your spouse, or maybe it's you with a, a big family or, or maybe it's a big group or whatever. And then you say, you know, what type of destination you're looking for. Maybe it's like a secluded beach, or maybe you're looking for a big adventure or whatever. And you, you kind of input the things you're looking for in a vacation, and then it will automatically generate your destination for you. You know, that's a, a simple idea. Um, there's a lot of, obviously, uh, in my opinion, you re what you really want to do is you want to pick a niche that you're serving and then you want to ask them questions about how they're, you know, anything that's tedious or, or takes, takes them a long time to solve or uh, some, something that AI could do on their behalf or could enhance for them and really hone in on that niche. Uh, cause obviously, you know, the big broad general AI use cases, uh, are already kind of being taken by the big players in the market, you know, Google and Meta and, and open AI and all these other big players are kind of, it's a big arms race to see who can get to the big stuff first. But in my opinion, for, for us creators, uh, the big opportunity is in the niche, the riches are in the niches, right? And so if you can find a niche that could be enhanced by AI, you know, I talked to this guy the other day and he's in a little industry where he manually has to sift through a ton of text and he thinks AI could really enhance and speed up his workflow. Uh, I was thinking the other day, uh, I, like I mentioned early on in this, in this, uh, 
workshop. I, I used to be a sixth grade math teacher. I did the Teach for America program in Las Vegas, and that was a blast, and I loved it, and I loved interacting with the kids. But you know what I absolutely hated with a passion was grading a big stack of papers on my Saturday when I wanted to watch college football or you know something <laughs> like that. And so uh, maybe you build an app that that, uh, you know, you, you take a picture of all the papers uh, or you scan them in maybe with like a webcam or something, and then it shoots it off to AI who grades all the papers for you and sends all the results off to the students for you. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> again, if you pick a niche, uh, in my opinion, that's, that's really where the opportunity is with this kind of stuff. Yeah, I think this yep. is really, but it's been really, really valuable to kind of see this, the opportunities, you know, endless. And yeah, the riches are in the niches for this, because I think a lot of big players that are taking kind of the big market shares, but then you can do more simple things. And maybe for a specific use case for your clients or customers, maybe you already have an online course or an audience you serve. And then it's a lot easier to kind of come up with something that is very specific to them. Like, you know, with my friend, John Schumacher, he built something for webinars to help them, uh, you know, like to pull in from mid journey to slides and you can kind of, you know, simple prompts there and same, same with his, you know, it's not, it's even prompt less sometimes because you, you know, when you, when you're developing something, you can train it and then you can actually have the set of questions you want to ask it. And then it pulls, it pulls out the right information. Like for a, for a webinar, you need a specific flow. So going to chat GPT would be more comp complicated, but if you have built something that uses the API, you can actually train it and it's just gives you better information, you know, because garbage in garbage out usually, and you can help <laughs> your cust basically you can help your customers. So they don't really need to be master prompt engineers. I think that's where I see a lot of stuff is going. I don't know what you see, like what, 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 what is your thoughts on kind of the future and where things are heading? Like, because we've talked a lot about no code, you know, which comes before and now AI is like all over the place and the kind of the revolution has started with this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think obviously, you know, text generation is, is first, that's kind of the easy, the lowest hanging fruit images video i mean you've seen uh, what is it called moon moon something uh yeah yeah anyways there's this new service out that that is basically mid journey but for video clips which again it's not in my opinion not the greatest quality yet but which one crazy. have you used which uh, um, run, it's called runway, a runway or uh runway it's ML? called Oh, runway! It, I have heard of that as well. I, just, I love run. Runway is great. I I started using it and dabbled with it a little bit. It's pretty nice. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, there's a new one that I just heard about. Um, it's called Moon Something. I will I will find. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah Moon I'll Valley. Drop, Moon Valley. Got it. Moon got Valley. It. Yeah, yeah. I'll drop some links in the description as well. But if you found this valuable, just leave a comment. You know, Jordan is also on YouTube. You can connect with him. I'll link up his, his some resources below and leave a comment for sure and subscribe because we've shared a lot of value here. Like, yeah, the prompting maybe could have been better, more prepared, <laughs> but we, we did some really cool stuff, when it, which was the promise of this to kind of show you how you can build, you know, simple apps with no code and AI. And that's kind of, and the, the, it's like the sky is the limit as we've talked about here, but anything else you'd like to share, like, you know, anything, any thoughts, any final words of wisdom, Jordan? Yeah, no, I, I just think as long as you have, you know, what Trey Smith calls the bulldozer mentality, if you're able to push through obstacles, uh, really you can build anything you want and any business you want in, in this today's day and age. And it's exciting and fun. And, uh, yeah, I'm rooting for you. And if you need any help, feel free to reach out, but yeah, thank you, Navid for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, leave leave your biggest takeaways in the comments. Maybe you are excited to build something. What are, what will you build for your audience, for your clients? Let us know. Maybe you build yourself, maybe you hire someone to do it, but either way, the sky is the limit with this technology, no code and AI. And yeah, subscribe to the channel and we'll connect more. We have a lot of more content coming for you. And Jordan is also on here. So connect with him as well. All right. Ciao for now.